Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing an unboxing slash review of the MSI Katana 15.6 inch laptop. This medium sized laptop is packing some significant power under the hood and I was able to grab it from Costco at just $1200. They had it for $100 off. Combine that with the crazy good customer service that Costco provides and this deal is a no brainer for me. As you guys seen from my videos, I buy things that I don't need, but want. And this was definitely that kind of purchase. I don't really have a gaming laptop, but instead have some portable consoles that I take with me when I travel. The Steam Deck and the Switch are awesome. They're amazing handhelds, but since they're locked down in a way, I can't do everything that I can normally do on an actual computer. I still plan on using my Steam Deck, Switch, Analog Pocket for a majority of my games since they're just pick up and play, but plan on using this laptop for things that require anti-cheat or more power. I'll be showing those games in the performance part of the video. The unboxing experience for this laptop is... good. It's not a crazy fancy experience that some high-end ASUS models have. It's just efficient. The packaging was secure and all the things that I needed were easy to find, even though I overlooked the power supply, but it just blended in, so it's not my fault. I was even surprised that the laptop came with a free mouse. It's not the best mouse or even close to that, but having a freebie thrown in that's pretty usable is a nice touch. So in total, everything in the packaging included a 200 watt power supply, RGB wired mouse, instruction manual and warranty papers, and the laptop itself. Specs. The specs for the MSI Katana are as follow. A 15.6 inch display that has a 1920 by 1080p screen with 144 hertz refresh rate. It is packing an NVIDIA RTX 4060 laptop GPU, a 12th gen Intel Core i7 CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which is two sticks of eight, a one terabyte M.2 SSD, and it has Microsoft 11 Home installed on it. Under the hood. After taking the 15,000 screws off, we're greeted with a very clean and well laid out computer engine. Computer guts, I, I don't know, the stuff that makes it go brrrr. As mentioned before, we had the two sticks of DDR5 RAM, both equaling 16, but this can be upgraded if needed down the road. We can also see the substantial three cell 53.5 watt hour battery, which would be an absolute blast to puncture. And most notably, and weird, the SSD. I say weird because apart from the main stick, there's another area available for additional memory, but doesn't have a screw bracket to hold the new drive in place. Some research has taught me that MSI sells a little piece of plastic that goes here and secures the drive. A very Apple move from MSI to remove a feature, then sell it to you. Apart from these major things, the bottom frame is actually built well, and it's a fair bit heavy. I.O. This laptop comes with one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C with display port, two USB 3.2 Gen 1, one USB 2.0, one HDMI 2.1, and one mic slash headphone combination jack. And it also has an Ethernet port. Size comparison. I thought I'd put some laptop size comparisons in the video. First up is my 14 inch MacBook Pro. Obviously it's smaller, heavier, thinner, less bezels, but it's also a higher end product, I guess. Actually, I don't know if I'd say that. It is only $300 more than the MSI, so there's that, but I guess apples to oranges. The other more on par comparison is my old gaming laptop. This HP Omen also has a 15.6 inch display, but surprisingly, the chassis is thinner, but it is wider. The keys in the MSI are crunched together while they're noticeably spaced out more on the Omen. And because of this width, the Omen also has pretty large bezels around the screen. Build quality. I was actually shocked with the build quality of this laptop. Now the Katana line isn't really the top of the line specs. When I think of impeccable build quality, my mind goes to MacBooks or the Razer Blade series, both of which are up there in price. The Katana has a plastic shell, but it has some weight to it, which is nice to see. Like I mentioned before, when I took the bottom panel off, the inside was metal while the outside is plastic. So it's actually well supported in terms of framework. You'll see here that I'm doing a flex test and it didn't actually flex as much as I thought it would. The trackpad isn't the best and leaves room to be desired, but the chassis was pretty tight with almost no noticeable bend. The keyboard on this device is also built very well. It feels great, the keys have a nice travel distance, and it isn't loud when typing on. The only part of the build that I would desire more from is the screen slash display. It's 1080, so there's that, but the panel has a matte finish. I personally don't like this because it makes the images look dry, but it is more beneficial when going up against glare. The screen shows some bend, but again, Realistically, you're not going to be twisting the screen. If anything, you'll be applying downward pressure while the screen is closed. I'd rate the overall build quality a 7.5 out of 10. Performance. So the performance of this laptop is something I'm still testing. I wanted to try and play games right out of the box as I think that's the most fair and default way that most people use this device. 
I have three games that I'll show, and those are Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Battlefield 2042, and Resident Evil 4 Remake, so three relatively modern games. I also have the built-in NVIDIA stats in the top left corner so you'll be able to see the frames as well as the GPU power being pulled. I do want to preface the gameplay with a few things. The first thing is that I did an oopsie. I recorded the audio using the built-in mic instead of having OBS capture the desktop audio, so I apologize for that. You're going to hear some clicking, you're going to hear whatever the mic is recording. The second thing I want to mention is that I ran the three games at the default recommended settings. I was a little underwhelmed by how low the frame rate was for some of these titles. With a 4060, I was expecting at least 100 frames in all of these titles. After I recorded these segments, I did go back and tweak some settings, updated all the drivers, and that did solve the issue some. I also went a step further and downloaded MSI Afterburner to slightly overclock the RTX 4060, and that helped boost the FPS tremendously. The temperatures also stayed relatively low during a longer playing session. I ran Call of Duty for about 2 hours and didn't notice an alarming spike. Again, those changes I made are not reflected in the gameplay. The laptop runs great now, the games are running on ultra settings with above 100 FPS, so keep that in mind. Recap. Alright guys, that has been my unboxing review of the MSI Katana 15 inch laptop with the Nvidia RTX 4060 GPU. What are my final thoughts? I think it's decent. Gaming laptops fall into a category for me that I personally don't need too much. If I'm at home, I have consoles and a PC. If I'm away from the house, I have portables. A gaming laptop definitely bridges that gap, but it's definitely not a necessity, at least for me. Now part of that is also because my personal driver is a MacBook, which I use for content consumption as well. I can see a gaming laptop being someone's daily driver, and if that's the case, this is way more than worth it in their eyes. I think for the price that I purchased this at, $1200, I'm getting a product that's equal in value. It can play the games I throw at it, and it also leaves room for overclocking when performance is required. The overall build is nice, and it doesn't scream, I'm a gamer, but it does whisper it more than other laptops do. My biggest gripe with this laptop is the screen, like I mentioned. I think it's for me using screens with a higher resolution, but the 1080p screen is the weakest link on the Katana. It feels dull and flat, as sometimes it makes me wonder if my game was on lower settings, but no, it was just tied to the resolution. Now that I say this, I do want to try doing HDMI out to my 1440p monitor to see if that would be a better experience. Let me know if you guys want to see that video as well. I'm curious as to what you guys think of this laptop. Is it worth the MSRP of $1300 to you? Is this the best bang for your buck? You may be in a different position than me where gaming laptop is your main driver and if that's the case, would you choose the Katana to be your device? I'm interested to see what you guys think. I also want to ask your opinions on settings. If you have any tips or tricks to make the gaming experience better, let me know down in the comments. I had a lot of fun reviewing this laptop and hope to review more in the future so I can have a bigger pool to compare from. As always, I truly appreciate you guys watching the videos. If you enjoyed this one, please leave a like. If you want to stay tuned for some exciting upcoming videos, consider subscribing. We just reached 300 subs, which is dope. If we reach 500 in two months, I'll, uh, I don't know, I'll eat 50 McNuggets in one setting and pretend like I didn't enjoy it. But we both know I will. I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, thanks, bye. Switching match. We have the lead. Requesting air support. Friendly overwatch hero in the area. Set takes out. Stun grenade out.
That's your move. Yes. 